Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be a massive <laughs> scream spring TBR. And it is massive. <laughs> it is quite, it is quite the TBR pile, my friends. I've got some memoirs on here. I've got some self-development books that my therapist has assigned me. And uh, here's the thing, when my therapist does that, she is amazing, because she goes, I know how to connect to this woman, she loves to read, here's a book that you might enjoy that could help your mental health. But then in the same breath, she goes, no shame if you don't read it by next session. There is no shame in that. If you decide you don't want to, and you decide you want to talk about something else next week, totally fine, no shame. What she doesn't understand is that when she's that empathetic and kind, <laughs> I will read other books instead. And so I'm hoping that if I talk about these books in the spring TBR, I'll actually read them <laughs> and um, be able to discuss these books uh, with my therapist very soon. As always though, I need to know what you're all excited to read this spring. It could be just April or it could be just general spring. And also, do you have a book that just screams spring to you that you think I should read? And I'm talking like beautiful, charming growth mindset, um, just a good, spring book. If you have one of those, I would love to know, especially if it's a romance. I mean, let me know what you want to read. Let me know what I should read, especially memoirs. I talked about this in my wrap up, but I want to read a memoir a month. So if you have any memoirs that you think particularly invoke the springtime era, I would love. <laughs> I don't even know what constitutes a springtime memoir, but if you can think of one, I would love that because I want to add more memoirs to the shelf. Anyway, though, let's just get into this thing. And we're going to start with a really cool book package I received for a book I've already read. I read it in February, I believe, but I'm so excited that I received this PR package and I always like looking at book PR packages. So, so anyway, this is a book PR package for the book Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. Here's the book in question, orange, purples, pinks. It's just an incredible cover and it was a really fun romance. So love that. But then also in the package, we have some pencils that say my self-destructive impulse hard at work. <laughs> um, and I just snorted. <laughs> and then classic stoner, which You'll understand if you read the book. And then a candle, which I have not smelled yet, smells like Ben Ladderman. If you read it, you'll know. Then we've got some Sugarfina Rose Roses gummies. And then, uh, whoa, a box of matches to light the candle. So, and then look at just this fun confetti. It's gold, it's pink. It's delectable. Anyway, thank you so much to K Publicity for sending this to me. It was very, very exciting and I'm so thankful. So, I mean, let's take the gummies for a spin before we get into this video. I love me a good rosé, so. Oh, heavenly days. That smells like alcohol. That is amazing. Holy smokes. Again, I did read Fool Me Once in the past uh, couple months and it was really fun. And it's just a, it's a fun, exes to enemies to lovers type of book. It's fun. If you like that trope, then this one will do it for you. Okay. All right, let's get into this pile of books. I did not organize them. So it might be jumping around from category to category, also known as genre, Noel. It might jump around genres and also book club and also therapist <laughs> recommendations. So let's just get in. We're going to start here at the top, which is Patty Smith's Just Kids. I picked this up maybe a year and a half ago because it's one of my grad school friends' favorite books and at least one of their favorite memoirs for sure. So I picked it up because I had heard such phenomenal things about it. And then actually in my March wrap up, my last video, uh, a couple people had said Just Kids is an amazing memoir. So I have 
I have it. I didn't just pick it up. I've had it for a long time, but I definitely plan on prioritizing it. I had read, like, I flipped it open and just read a random paragraph, and I immediately really liked the writing. Um, and again, as I've said, I just love seeing how people decide to tell the story of their life. So, yeah, if you've recommended this to me, I'm getting to it in the spring. All right, another book on my spring TBR is The Thousand Crimes of Ming Shu. This is a book that I picked up in January and it just looks so fun. It looks like adventure from beginning to end and it's also like cowboy themed. And that's really fun for me right now because back a couple months ago, I was watching Yellowstone and I was like, wow, I wanna read a cowboy book. Orphaned young Ming Shu, the son of Chinese immigrants, is raised by the no notorious leader of a California crime syndicate who trains him to be his deadly enforcer. But when Ming falls in love with Ada, the daughter of a powerful railroad mag... Maginate? Maginate. I know this word, and of course, now that I... Maginate. Magnate. I swear I'm gonna get my graduate degree any moment now. Um, and the two elope, he seizes the opportunity to escape to a different life. Soon after, in a violent raid, the tycoon's henchmen kidnap Ada and conscript Ming into service for the Central Pacific Railroad. Battered, heartbroken, and yet defiant, Ming partners with a blind clairvoyant known only as the Prophet. Together, they, the two set out to rescue his wife and to exact revenge on the man on the men who destroyed Ming, aided by a troupe of magic show performers, some with supernatural powers whom they meet on the journey. Now, if that doesn't scream adventure to you, I don't know what does. It's layered, right? Because we've got this like secret elopement and we've got this cowboy and we've got this magic element to it. It just sounds super fun. And I hope that when I get to it, it just sweeps me away. I love a book that just takes me on a roller coaster of emotions, and I think this one's gonna do that. So, can't wait for this one. Next up, we have a romance that the author actually sent me, which was super sweet, and that is Scandalized by Ivy Owens. Not only did she send me her book, but she sent me a super sweet handwritten note that was just really kind towards me specifically. Exhausted and on a deadline with a story that could make or break her career, investigative journalist Georgia Ross is on the verge of a meltdown when a canceled flight leaves her stuck in the airport overnight. But when a familiar face appears, the older brother of her childhood friend, and offers help, Gigi may have finally caught a break. So, um, yes. <laughs> I'll be reading it. And also, it, uh, it alludes to, oh, it says, a steamy romance debut perfect for fans of Tessa Bailey which I am a fan of Tessa Bailey and if it's anything like that type of steam I am going to be intrigued so anyway thank you so much to Ivy Owens for sending this to me and I'm very excited to read this romance I think it's gonna be fun all right next up we have Men Re-Reaped by Jesmyn Ward, which I'm really, really excited about. So yeah, this is about Jesmyn Ward's life and specifically about her family and the community that she's grown up in. Um, it says, here in the space of four years, she lost five young men dear to her, including her beloved brother, to accidents, murder, and suicide. Their deaths were seemingly un unconnected, yet their lives have been connected by identity and place. And as Jesmyn del dealt with these losses, she came to a staggering truth. These young men died because of who they were and the places they were from, because certain disadvantages breed a certain kind of bad luck. Because they lived with a history of racism and economic struggle, the agonizing reality commended Jesmyn to write, at last, they are true stories and her own. So that sounds moving. It sounds powerful. And again, I've heard fantastic things about this book. Yeah, I'm really excited to get to this one. And I will be in this springtime fever. <laughs> okay. All right, next up, we have a book that I've owned for a while, and I'm determined to get to it. And that is It Is Wood, It Is Stone. This is also just like the most spring cover I have on my shelves. The yellow, the flowers. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, holy God, <laughs> this is just like, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, look at this quote. A fever dream of a book, I could not put it down. 
Oh, we love to hear that, Justin Torres. Okay, the just the little blurb at the top says, two women are drawn into a seductive web of power, displacement, sexuality, and other mysteries of the heart, and this magnetic debut by a young Brazilian American author to watch. I think most of this or all of this takes place in Brazil, and it looks like there is some marital problems. Looks like some anxiety and restless about restlessness about one's life. So I think it's gonna be pretty stellar and um, I was gonna say fantastic, but I feel like I say that all the time. So stellar is the new word, <laughs> um, but this just looked really good and the cover is just sensational. So there we go. Okay, next up we have another memoir that I'm almost done with or at least halfway done with, and that is Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. I bought this for my birthday, and again, memoirs, I'm into them. <sighs> Even I'm annoyed saying it, so I'm sorry <laughs> if you're annoyed hearing it. Um, but this book has been really good so far, at least through the halfway point. We've, we're mainly getting Ashley's childhood and the tumultuous relationship with her mom, in comparison to the very loving and empathetic friendship with her brother. So it's been really interesting seeing the different pieces of her family coming together in different ways. But also there's a lot of anxiety and worry and actual action of sexual violence against Ashley in this book, which is heartbreaking to read and is just so powerful when you're having the, the author narrate it to you. So this book definitely deals with heavy topics, especially violent topics. So just keep that in mind if you decide to pick this one up. But overall, it's a really powerful memoir. And I will tell you more about how I feel in my April wrap up. All right, this next book is a book that I have wanted to read for a long time. And I think I bought it last year, like last spring. And because I've seen that it makes a lot of people cry and it just breaks something inside of them, it's hard for me to start it, um, but I'm determined. I need to just read it because I need to know just everything that goes on and I want to be a part of the group that are saying how good this book is. Um, but that is Yoke, which I mean, I just love this cover so much. And then you have the sister on the back and then on the pages, their hands are meeting. Oh, <laughs> the design of this cover is just sensational. Um, but this book is about two sisters who are super, super different. And I think they started off close in their life and then they just end up being two different people, but then one of the sisters gets sick. And so then it's about the two sisters coming back together and leaning on each other. So I don't know how it ends. I'm going to assume how it ends because of people's reactions to the book, but I think it's gonna hurt, but it might help. It might hurt in an essential way, right? So anyway, that's Yoke. All right, next up we have a book that, I mean, this was just, this is the video of looking at your own shelves and finding some gems that you forgot you owned. But I got a comment on my last video. I had said like, what was one of your favorite books for March? And someone mentioned this book and I was like, I own that one, so it needs to be read. But that is Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I mean, just check out the cover. I'm sure we've all seen this book but I'm finally going to read it. And it says, almost everything about Wallace is at odds at the Midwestern University town where he's working uneasily toward a biochem degree. An introverted young man from Alabama, black and queer, he has left behind the family without escape. He has left behind his family without escaping the long shadows of his childhood. For reasons of self-preservation, Wallace has enforced a wary distance, even within his own circle of friends, some dating each other, some dating women, some feigning straightness. But over the course of a late summer weekend, a series of confrontations with colleagues and an unexpected encounter with an ostensibly straight white classmate conspire to fracture his defenses while exposing long-hidden long currents of hostility and desire within their community. 
Yes, so this will be getting red this spring. And again, thank you so much to the person that left that comment because it just, you know, it reminded me to just take a stroll around your own shelves. For the love of God, we keep buying books and not reading them. So just, I mean, I say we, I'm speaking for myself, but like <laughs> sometimes there's treasures on your own shelf. You just gotta turn around and fucking look. So yes. <laughs> All right, actually, this is another book by Ashley Winstead, which is not out yet, but it is an arc that I would love to read before it comes out, just like Fool Me Once, so that I can tell you all how great it is. Um, but that is The Last Housewife. Now, Ashley Winstead wrote In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which was a really fun thriller. I believe this is another thriller, um, whereas Fool Me Once is a romance. So it says, I'll just read the blurb, a pitch black thriller about a woman determined to destroy a powerful cult and avenge the deaths of the women taken in by it, no matter the cost. <gasps> Holy shit. Oh my God. Ah! She told me about this book. We interviewed, the Late Night Book Club had interviewed her and she mentioned this. And I remember when she told us, I thought it was so cool. And here we are. And I'm, oh my heavens, that sounds so good. Okay, I'll read this this spring and I'll let you know. It officially comes out on August 16th. So thanks so much to K Publicity and Sourcebooks for sending me a copy. I, uh, it's gonna be thrilling to say the least. All right, two books that I'm excited to read are books that I picked up in Paris that I got really, really good responses to. So seeing how excited you all are or all were for me to read these just made me want to read them even more. The first one is Phantom of the Opera, which is my book club's June book pick. So I'm going to read this regardless because it's for my book club, but seeing how many of you were excited that I picked this up, I was just like, yes. So really excited for this one, but even more excited because of the general response I'm excited to read Once Upon a Broken Heart. Again, talked about this in the Paris Book Hall. So many of you were like, holy shit, I'm so excited you picked that up. Um, and many of you assured me that this is the UK edition. So <laughs> yeah, I'll take that as a huge win. But um, apparently this is a spinoff from Stephanie Garber's other series, Caraval. Am I saying that right? I hope I am. Um, which makes me wonder, do I have to read Caraval first? I hope I'm saying that correctly. But if you've read that other series, do I need to read that before I can really take this one in? Or is it a true standalone? Anyway, this just sounds like a super, super fun book. It's, it genuinely sounds so fun. I want to read it in April just because of the response that I got on that book haul video. So many of you were so excited. So... If you've read this, let me know if I need to read the other series, but I'll also just look it up and then hopefully I'll read this by the end of the month because you all just, you said such good things about it. So I'm really excited. <laughs> all right, next let's get into some therapy assignments. <laughs> Um, the first one that my therapist assigned me was actually like eight months ago and I had started reading it, but because of how horrifyingly bad my mental health was last year, it, I just didn't want to read it. That is Brene Brown's The Gifts of Imperfection. This is a book that my therapist has continued to tell me I need to read and I continue to say, will do but I've got too much shit to talk about. So um, I do need to read this. I did get through the first two chapters and found it really comforting uh, and really eye-opening. So I need to prioritize it this spring because mental health I've come to find is something that constantly needs to be nourished and constantly needs to be just addressed because there's been a few times over the last few months where I think I figured it all out. <laughs> And then a panic attack hits and you're like, oh God, <laughs> apparently I still need help. Anyway, so I, I need to read this. I need to make it uh, an actual uh, priority. And so I'm going to sit it actually. I'm going to sit it face up in front of my computer so that I can't run away from it. Another one is a book that continues to come up. I feel like 
especially over the last couple of sessions in therapy, this book, this book is definitely one where my therapist is like, I don't want to shame you, but I really need you to read this one because you're going to learn a lot. And I think it's going to be overall really good for you. And that is Set Boundaries and Find Peace, A Guide to Reclaiming Yourself. I think many of us have issues with just not even setting boundaries, but figuring out what your boundaries even are. And I think that there's just so much guilt around setting a boundary that you don't want to do it. Uh, but my therapist is, uh, <laughs> she's pretty adamant that I need to read this and figure out how to do it. So, um, <laughs> we're, we're gonna, we're gonna get to it. All right, we have two more books in the mental health category. The first one is a book that I picked up for myself that I just saw when I went to the bookstore for my birthday, and that is My Mess is a Bit of a Life, and that is Adventures in Anxiety. Um, and the thing with self-development psychological books is that sometimes it's too sciencey or it's too anecdotal, uh, which I think the two books for therapy will definitely be. And there's definitely a time and place for those books that are hugely beneficial. But I also think that sometimes the best thing I can do for my mental health is to just read or watch other art where someone has experienced something that I feel. Um, and so I think that this book is just going to be fun, not really as a teaching. It's not a, it's not a teachable book. It's more just like, Hey, I have anxiety and here's what I've been through. And I think that that will be very helpful for me, especially as a way to like break it up and just kind of go to something more personable and then go back to a book of like actual learning. I think it's going to be great. And I think it is needed and necessary. All right, and then the last book in the kind of self-help psychological realm of books is Tired as Fuck. <laughs> oh, I love this cover so much. I actually, I don't think I had ever heard of this book, or at least I had never seen this cover, and then I saw it, and I was like, <laughs> bingo, bango, that's how I'm feeling. Um, but it says, Burnout at the Hands of Diet, Self-Help, and Hustle Culture. So from my understanding, this is a little bit of a memoir and also a little bit of a critique on even self-development books, which I just showed you two of, um, and this kind of just kind of always feeling like you need to work on yourself and fix yourself and be productive all the time. Um, so this book and actually Burnout, which I talked about in my March TBR, are two books that I feel like will help me settle down a little bit. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm interested in this one. Okay, next up, we have a romance that I'm really excited to have received. So thank you so much to Kristen from Leo PR for sending this to me. But that is Can't Resist Her. And I mean, just look at that cover, friends. Oh, the blues. Oh, the night sky. I just love it so much. But from what I understand, this is about um, one woman who's come back to her hometown and she wants to save her high school from being demolished because her grandmother is the one who established the high school. So she wants to save the high school. But then the love interest of the book, who is someone that our main character went to high school with, is working on the architectural team. So it sounds like they're kind of at odds with what they want for the neighborhood. And um, apparently they have a little bit of a past from high school and there's some tension and some unresolved shit going on. And I just love a good exes to lovers romance. I mean, I, I don't know if they were technically exes, but there was definitely something going on. So I'm excited. And it's gonna be cool to see like, if they're working for different goals, like working towards different goals, what will the outcome be? I guess we'll have to see. And thank you again, Kristen, for sending this to me. And actually, speaking of Kristen, she also sent me this next book, which is a book by an author I just read for the first time last month, and I didn't love the book last month, but I am excited to see how she fares with romance, and that is Colleen Hoover's Reminders of Him. I read Verity last month, didn't love it, but I also knew like this was her first official time with thrillers. And I've never read one of her romances, so I wanna give them a chance. Hopefully I enjoy. 
I was also thinking about reading November 9th by Colleen Hoover, because I think that's the really, really popular one right now. So if you have a preference between the two, I'd love to know. But I kind of just want to see, because I feel like Colleen Hoover is like one of the main names right now, especially on TikTok. So um, I just want to know. I want to know what's up. I want to see what's going on. Um, but it says, after serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Kenna Rowan returns to the town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her four-year-old daughter. But the bridges Kenna burned are providing impossible to rebuild. Everyone in her daughter's life is determined to shut Kenna out, no matter how hard she proves she works to prove herself. The only person who hasn't closed their door on her completely is Ledger Ward, a local bar owner and one of the few remaining links to Kenna's daughter. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kenna's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. Interesting. I guess we'll see how it fares. All right, next up, we have a short story collection that Jess picked up for me in my Powell's book shopping video. We did like a shop and swap where we like shopped for each other and then swapped books. Um, but she picked me up this short story collection and that is a manual for cleaning women. This is just a collection of short stories, which I am so excited about. Have I read any short story collection this, this year? I don't think so, actually. I don't I don't think so, uh, but some of my favorite books from 2021 were short story collections, so I'm really excited to read this one. It also just has like such a springy color, which I think would be great for a spring TBR. I don't know what I'm doing right here, <laughs> but <laughs> I, uh, I'm excited for this one. And again, really want to read more short story collections, so need to prioritize. All right, next up we have another book that... I think it definitely has a lot to do with mental health, but it's not like a self-development book. This is a novelization of someone with really terrible mental health stuff going on, but that is Sorrow and Bliss. This is a book that was recommended to me by Jess, who got me that short story collection. Um, and I guess we're just at the Jess portion of the video. Welcome, I hope you all enjoy. I love her to death. So <laughs> my understanding is we have a main character. I read the first like 20 pages and was really enjoying it, but we have a main character who from the outside seems to have a perfect life, like just really great marriage, uh, had a successful career, everything seems to be fine, but her brain and her mental health has always been a problem for her. And so the second paragraph of the synopsis says, when she was 17, a little bomb went off in her brain and she was never the same, but countless doctors, endless therapy, and every kind of drug later, she still doesn't know what's wrong, why she spends days unable to get out of bed and alienate and alienates both strangers and her loved ones with casually cruel remarks. So this sounds like just a really interesting look at just someone's life as they struggle with their mental health. Okay, next up we have a book that I've talked about a lot. I think I've mentioned it two or three times now in the last couple videos. So I won't I won't go super into it, but I just need to show this because it's such a good cover and especially for spring, it is perfect. That is, I'm so not over you. I mean, come on, spring. Huh? I love it. This is about two exes that come together to convince one of their families that like their life is fine. So I think it's like two exes. And then one of them says, hey, will you pretend like we're still together? And can we go to this dinner together? And then through that dinner and that experience, I think they start to realize there might still be feelings there. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, I thought it sounded great and the cover is just super springy. So I wanted to mention it. All right, next up, this is a book that I picked up in January, and that is Beasts of a Little Land. In 1917, deep in the snowy mountains of an occupied Korea, an impoverished local hunter on the brink of starvation saves a young Japanese officer from an attacking tiger. In an instant, their fates are connected. And from this encounter unfolds a saga that spans half a century. So it sounds adventurous, but it also sounds like rooted throughout decades, which I love. I love a book that kind of checks in throughout time and you just see how like one life and one instant ripples out into multiple facets of someone's life and families and connections. So also this cover is exceptional. <laughs> 
need I say more? I think not. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be great. All right, next up, we have a book with such an interesting cover and really just from a texture standpoint, but also the story sounds fantastic. And it's from an author who I thoroughly enjoy. And that is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. This is the author of Station Eleven. Super, super good book. Very creepy during a global pandemic and also just got turned into a show. Um, but like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's just like, almost like a holographic card. It's like a little glittery. Oh my God, amazing, <laughs> just amazing. Um, but I saw that this book got such good reviews, which you always just worry, right? Like when an uh, author has gotten so successful, you're always like, what are their next books gonna be like after finding such success with another? So seeing that this book has gotten such good reviews is really wonderful. It says the award-winning best-selling author of Station Eleven and the Glass House returns with a novel of art, time, love, and plague that takes the reader from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon nearly 500 years later, unfurling a story of humanity across centuries in space. Yeah, I will be reading this immediately, <laughs> immediately. I'm, uh, I actually would love to start reading this like today. I'm both obsessed with the analysis of a pandemic world as well as interstellar right now. So I think that those two things will combine into a wonderful novel. At least that's what I'm hoping for with this book. So yeah. <laughs> All right, and then the last three books I'm gonna mention, I have a few other books actually on my desk right now, but I've just been talking for so long that I'm just gonna wrap it up here. <laughs> and it's gonna just be three book club picks. As I mentioned, Phantom of the Opera is our June pick. May's book pick is Paranesi, which I have heard seriously only fantastic things about. So I'm excited for that one. And then April's book pick is Reprieve and March's was the fifth season. March, April, Paranesi is May, and then Phantom of the Opera is June. And then we'll figure out what to read moving forward. But yeah. Anyway, my friends, that's the end of this video. I'm gonna go finish off these gummies, which apparently taste like alcohol, but they just taste fun to me. And <laughs> um, yeah, so I think this video is gonna be like an hour long, so wish me luck in the editing process, which you will have seen by the time I've edited it. But in any case, just wish me luck, okay? Please, please, <laughs> because I'm really nervous about editing this video now. Oh my God, it's gonna take forever. Anyway, that's the end of this video, my friends. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one.